Hi friends, here we are again with uh, the Easter story. And we uh, looked at the Lord's Supper or communion at our last uh, 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 message. And now we want to come to Gethsemane. So following the Lord's Supper, we had, there's more that we could share. The f Jesus washing the disciples' feet, the instructions that he gave them in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. The abide in me from John chapter 15 and the very high priestly prayer of Jesus Christ himself for his disciples. So much was packed into this week and a lot of it we see taught in John's gospel in chapter 14 right through to the end of chapter 17. It all happened right around this here time where he gave uh, the bread and the cup to his disciples. And then he led them to a place. <clears throat> it's a place where he was apt to go and pray. It was a place that he had gone to uh, before, according to the scripture. And so he comes to a place called Gethsemane. And he says to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. So he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Now the Lord Jesus was determined to go to the cross. He had predicted it. He had told his disciples that he would be uh, go there, be crucified, buried. Three days he would rise from the dead. So it was nothing new. It was clearly uh, in the plan of God. He knew it was in the plan of God. He left heaven with this plan in mind. It didn't happen by accident. It was designed. And he knew it. And he said he had to be about his father's business from the very beginning. When he was 12 years old. Don't you know I must be about my father's business. And in John chapter 12 he said, Father, the hour has come to glorify your son. So here he is. The time has actually come. That dreaded moment has come upon him. And my friend, it was a dreaded moment. I don't understand it. How God himself took on humanity and comes to this place where he goes to this garden to pray, to speak to the Father, and to actually plead with the Father because of the weight of what he was to experience. The horrible weight of it. Something that none of us can ever imagine. He was about to experience it. So he took with him Peter and James and John. They are the two sons of Zebedee. And it says he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. And he makes a statement here that tells you the depth of what he was going through. And God has allowed this window for us to see the Son of God, for us to understand the fullness of the agony of the Son of God. And it ought to move our soul. He said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He said, This isn't a time that I really want to be alone. I need your support. Not only that, but his soul was exceedingly sorrowful to the point of death. Now he's not talking about his body so much here as his soul. The life in me, the person that I am, is so full, filled with sorrow, it's to the point of death. Have you ever been there? Well, probably none of us can say we've been where Jesus is. But we can certainly say Jesus has been where we've been. If there was ever a time when we could say Jesus understands the deepest and hardest and darkest moments of life, we can find it here. 
we find Jesus in Matthew chapter 26, 39. He just went a little further from them and he fell on his face and prayed. Luke says he went to his knees and prayed. Matthew tells us he went right to his face. Now there's no contradiction. He went to his knees and he ends up on his face on the ground. This, this picture of Jesus praying on his face on the ground it is a, an amazing thought, is it not? Is it not something to stir your heart when you think that the master of the universe, the creator of the stars, finds himself on his face, weeping, crying, crying out to God this, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. O oh my Father, if it is possible, the interesting thing is that we know that it wasn't. We know, and he knew that it wasn't. But the agony was so great, the depth of sorrow and woe was so deep, that he still cried out. And he cried out three times to the Father, which is kind of a significant number. Later on, we find the Apostle Paul with a real problem, and he prayed three times to the Father. But he also bowed to the will of God because the father answered him after three times and says, no, I'm going to leave you with this problem. That was in, that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Here he is on his face praying. My father on his face praying, crying out to the father. And this is the request that he has. Then he comes to his disciples, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Could you not stay with me in my darkest hour? My friends, here was the Son of God, alone. Alone. No comfort. No comfort. No comfort from the world. No comfort from his disciples. No comfort. And he could, feel, he could also understand that there would be no comfort in the hours to come. No comfort for the Son of God. It says this. Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now he was speaking to his disciples, but he was also referring to himself. Not that his, he had a sinful nature. He did not. But he did. He was a human being. He did have a body. And he didn't want to take this body to the cross. He didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to suffer the agony of it body, soul, and spirit, the fullness of the, the wrath of God poured out on the Son of God. He didn't want it. Would you? Would anybody? But he considered it, that your salvation and my salvation was worth the cost. And he was willing. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. And now we see how he gave his only son. And what he gave his only son to. He gave his only son to be crucified. He gave his only begotten son to be stripped and beaten and ripped to pieces. He gave his son for this. That's how much he loves you. Why would the father not Say, son, no farther than this. Humanity is not worth it. They have rebelled against me. They have rejected me. They have turned their back on me. They have railed against me. 
and it will do the same to you, son, I'm taking you home. We are not going to redeem this sorry lot. Jesus didn't get that answer. And so after he rebuked the disciples and encouraged them to pray, and my friend, let me encourage you to pray. Pray. The darkest hours ought to be the times of prayer. Sometimes they're not, but they ought to be. Pray. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Father, if there is no other way, if there is no other way, then I will do it. Now, this speaks volumes. It speaks volumes because now we have an understanding that there is no other way. Do you think if there was any other way for you to be saved, the Father would not stop the Son from going forward to this crucifixion, this cruelty, this incredible suffering that he was supposed to experience. There is no other way, friends. Only, only through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. The only salvation, the only hope, the only deliverance, the only life. Or the Father would have said from heaven, hold on. Some people have found a different way. It couldn't be done. There was no other way. Only Jesus Christ's blood, only the precious Lamb of God, only the Passover Lamb, Jesus, could make the sacrifice for our sins. He came back and he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Three times he prayed. Three times he poured out his heart before the Lord. And then he comes back. He said, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And there we have it, friends. We have Jesus ready, ready to come to that place where he was to go to the cross. In the loose gospel, it tells us, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. This is agony supreme, friends. Luke twenty two forty three says an angel appeared to heaven for him from heaven and strengthened him. And there we see again this uh, presence of God, this mercy of God, this grace of God, strengthening him, not because he was going to make it easy for Jesus, but because he had to stay alive to get to the cross. He needed that strength in order to make it to the cross. You know, sometimes when people are so absolutely broken, it they just die. They just die. Sometimes a spouse, older man, loses his wife, and he loses the will to live. And he doesn't take long to die afterwards. I've seen that. Jesus was at such a low point that he would have died if the angel had not strengthened him. Without that strength, without the angel coming and actually giving him strength, he wouldn't have made it to the cross. That's why it was strengthened. The task was before him, and he was that weak that he needed to be strengthened. Yes, weak. Does Jesus understand weakness? Does he understand despair? Does he understand 
utter sorrow, oh, my friend, he understands it all. He's been there. He's been tested in every point like we are, and yet without sin. This is why we can come to him and know that he has compassion on us, because he has, he has lived the life and died the death. But he's died a deeper death than any of us could ever imagine. The death that he experienced was a cutting off. And all you might look at the agony of Jesus Christ as he was being crucified and see the nails and the scars and the rips and the tears and everything else. The deepest and darkest cry from the cross was, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was the cry of utter agony, utter abandonment. It was the cry of deepest, deepest despair. So my friends, Jesus knew what was coming. He knew the agony of soul that he would experience. He knew the depth of sorrow that was to come his way. But yet, he said, not what I want here, but your will be done, Father. Yet he was willing to go. He was willing to accept what the Father's will was. And that was that he would be crucified for you. So my friend, pause at the Garden of Gethsemane. Consider Jesus Christ, the Son of God, weeping there on his face, crying, not just once, not twice, but three times, pouring out his heart, looking for some other way. It's one thing to be thinking about something, a, 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 a terrible circumstance that's to come. It's another thing to be in it. It's another thing for it to be right at the door and have to face the reality of it and the horror of it. We don't appreciate the incredible relationship the Father and the Son had. We don't appreciate the closeness of it. And we don't understand the severity of it being ripped apart at the cross. Reunited again? Oh, absolutely afterwards. But this season of utter blackness and darkest horror where he becomes sin for us who knew no sin, where the wrath of God was poured out on him. This season was an incredible place for him to have to go. But he went. And he went there for you and he went there for me. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Don't you understand that if the Father had to say no to the Son so that you could be saved, do you dare to say no to the Father when he calls you to be saved? Do you dare to turn away from the sacrifice of God's Son and think that you can find heaven some other way? Not for a moment, friend, not for an eternity. The utter abandonment and the forsaken Christ at the cross shouts to the world, you must come to Jesus or you will be utterly abandoned and forsaken. This is the only price for sin that is offered to you. There is no other. For the true Christian, the word of God teaches that we've been bought with a price, the precious blood of Christ. There is no salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There can be no other way. These three cries from the Lord Jesus Christ on his face to his father, his Father who always heard him. His Father who always answered his prayers. Was the darkest, deepest cries of agony we could ever imagine. 
only culminating in, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was, this was the lead up to it. So don't trifle with Almighty God and do not ignore the sacrifice of the Son, but come running to Him while you may and understand there is no other way. The cries that are in hell right now, if you could hear them, you would be moved. There are people in hell and they are crying and they will cry for eternity. But listen to me, the cry of Jesus, the, the, the agony of Christ will deliver you from that hell and save your soul. There it is. Jesus took our place. Jesus suffered. Jesus died for your sins. The Father accepts the sacrifice of the Son and he'll accept no other. The cost was too high. There is no other payment that can be found nor made. And so as we consider Gethsemane in the darkness of this hour, as they come to arrest Jesus Christ, Judas comes betraying him with a kiss. This majestic, awesome, beautiful, loving, caring Son of God, this one who healed the sick, the lame, who, as we saw this just recently in a church service, did good, good deeds, who was despised and rejected of men, who was considered nothing, who was trash in the eyes of the rulers of the world and the church at the time. This one is Lord and Christ. This one is the Savior and there is no other. So fall before him, worship him, thank him that he suffered in your place and allow him to have the lordship of your life because he fully deserves it. Jesus on his face in the garden, praying for you so that you would not be on your face in hell, crying out with no deliverance. Oh, he took your place. He took your hell. Praise him for it. Give him glory for it. And if you're not saved, then come running now. Now trust the living God. Do not trifle with the Almighty. God gave you his best. He can give you no more. Will you not come? Will you not trust? Will you not live? It is my cry that many will come, many will live, many will believe. Oh, what a Savior we have. He did it alone. He didn't get support from his disciples. Matter of fact, they all took off and fled. The end of it all. He was left alone. And he bore the sinner's burden, paid the price in full, and brings redemption to anyone who puts their faith and trust in him. May it be you, and may it be you today. And if you've already trusted Christ, point them to Jesus. Point the world to Jesus. Let them know this is the only Savior there is, because there isn't any other. I praise God for such a sacrifice. I praise the Lord that Jesus was willing to go. He was willing to accomplish the will of the Father. It wasn't that he was delighting in it. It wasn't that he was saying, oh, I can't wait to do this. He says, I wish I could get out of this. I so want to get out of this. But no, I must go through it. And he did. And he deserves all the praise we could ever give him. Amen. This song is called No One But Jesus. It's a song I wrote a number of years ago. And uh, 
It's true, friends. No one understands you like Jesus. No one ever loved you more. No one walked the lonely road to Calvary. But Jesus did it all to save your soul. Walking through this lonely world where sin strife for Jesus walked this way before and lived here as a man. He had nowhere to lay his head, ridiculed and scorned. Taken home by wicked men and wore a crown of Understands you like Jesus. No one ever loved you more. No one walked the lonely road to Calvary. But Jesus did it all to save your soul. Walking through this lonely world Where sin and strife abound More than conquerors we are But in His love we're found Day by day we overcome Kept by His strong hand Safe, secure, and warm and sure in the palm of his hand. No one understands you like Jesus. No one ever loved you more. No one walked the lonely road to Calvary, but Jesus did it all to save your soul, Jesus did it all to save your soul. Yes, he did, my friend. Jesus did it all. Give him your all. Trust him with your all. Surrender your all to him. Did he not give his all to you? Did he hold back? Did he say no? No, he said yes. And thank God that he did, or none of us would be saved. But my friend, the reality is only some of us will be saved, because not all will come. The Father accepted the Son's sacrifice why don't you? And do it today. Just trust him. His sacrifice was enough. Surely he suffered enough. Surely, surely he went through enough agony to save anybody, even you. Come to him today.